Understand that you don't need to try to find your own power. You don't need to. The power comes through the love for yourself. Make others respect you. You don't need to make others respect you because when you do that, you set up a barrier between you and people. You may not want to hear this, but I don't respect you. I will never. And nor should you want me to. You shouldn't want me to have to respect you. One of the things that we get caught up in is wanting others to respect us. This is what I'm going to be able to give you insight into today and why the greatest gift that I have and people have for you is not respecting you. Because this is a way back to the power that you want. The reason why I told you that I don't respect you is because we have been told so much that others need to respect us and that we need to earn respect or respect is earned and what we need to do is make sure that others don't overstep our boundaries because this is quote unquote disrespect disrespect is overstepping something that you feel to be something you hold dear for yourself a rule that you have for yourself is broken, so you'd feel disrespected. A person says something, and it's against your belief, so you feel disrespected. Because respect is something everybody is trying to get from someone else, everybody keeps everyone as a, at, <clears throat> sorry, at a distance. It's crazy because you start to believe that when I tell someone, don't do this or I won't speak to you, when I say that to someone, that I'm doing something for me to become more powerful, for me to have more control in the situation. That's what you feel. You feel like if I don't do this, then I won't ever get this person to see me as a significant person. I won't ever get, get them to truly appreciate what I have to offer and who I am. So, we always say, set boundaries. Everyone says out there, set boundaries. As I used to say, set boundaries. Because when you do that, then people can really start to know that you're a person that has power. And it was great that I taught you that. It was great that people are teaching you that. But that's immature advice. Because it's based on not you expressing yourself, but you holding something that's dear for you and it makes the other person have to hold what's dear for you as well. And people may go, or you may even feel that, you know what? I want people to respect me. I do. I mean, my whole life I've been disrespected by my family. I've been disrespected by my friends, uh, by women I've been with. I've been, been disrespected. I want people to respect me. And if you really look at the depth of what it is, you'll start to see that you want people to respect you because you want them to know that you mean something. You want them to respect you because you want them to know that you have significance as a person. 
that they can't just walk all over you. That you are a person who has worth. Because what they're doing, they're making you feel unworthy. What they're doing, it feels like you're powerless to change something. The advice is immature. Just like the advice I gave. It was immature advice. Well, based on where I was. It was, I thought it was mature advice. And uh, looking back on it, I go, it was immature advice because I was just going with what everybody said, what respect was. Much like you are. You're going with what everyone is saying you should do in, re in regards to this. It's crazy to me that people continue to say, people continuously say, through their whole career, set boundaries to you. It amazes me that someone could teach you for a very long period of time and continuously tell you to try, make others respect you. If others don't respect you, then you don't respect yourself. Respect yourself so that others can respect you as well. And if they're not, then you need to say it. You need to assert yourself. Because this is what I used to do. I remember having students and teaching them drills on getting someone to uh, not walk all over you. Because they would just feel like people walk all over me. And me being someone in that position before and feeling like, you know what, man? I know how to get out of this. I know what to do to get you, give you the strength to be able to set a boundary so that that person can respect you. And in his mind, he's like, that sounds like what I want. I want that person to not try to walk all over me. And I would do this drill and do this drill. And he'd be like, fuck, this is great. And then he would start to do that in his life. But what I started to notice in my life, and I know what every single one of them started to notice in their life, is that every time they set a boundary, one or two things happen. That person adhere to that boundary and went, I know to be around them, I have to do this, or that person walked away. That is what happened. They didn't walk away based on that person expressing themselves and just leaving it open to what I'll tell you about now. They had a choice in that moment to go, I either have to respect this thing that set up, this wall that set up, I have to either stop at it or try to push it over. And many of the people that that, that guy has set boundaries with, they've left his life. Because setting boundaries also puts separation between you and another person. That's what it does. So when you go, I want someone to respect me, I'm gonna set boundaries, that actually separates you. It does, people think that it's bringing them closer, but it's actually separating you. Boundaries are not put up so that people can come closer. Boundaries are actually blocks, they're walls. They're going, this is what's in my reality, and for you to come in my reality, you have to respect this here. But what's crazy is that he didn't know this, and I didn't know either, that your reality is actually beyond the boundaries. The boundaries are there so that it can save the relationship. Is not there to bring you closer. It's actually there to save you two from not walking away from each other. That's the only thing that a boundary does. It saves a relationship. And some people get so good at setting boundaries that they'll continuously do it through so many parts of their life that people actually feel that they're close to them, but at the same time, they can't truly express themselves in a the way they want to. And it, of course, the other side of it that it does, it also gives someone the chance to go, fuck, I didn't know I was doing that. And then it gives them the chance to become aware of something. But if the boundary gave them a chance, remember, the boundary is not you. You just set it. If this gave them a chance to see who they are, they still are away from you. Because when they come into your space, that's something you don't like. That's you. That's not them. That's a belief you have. You still have that belief. So that means that for them to have to be in your life, they have to also take on your belief. 
they have to also take it on. That I don't over, and it's maybe even in relation to you, they'll take on the beliefs specifically for you so you can have a relationship. And this is what brings me to this. It's separating you two. And the only thing that you're going to be, the only way you're going to be able to really get close to people is understand that the boundaries that are there are actually not helping you. It's actually hindering you. Your reality or your existence is all with that which is all. It's far beyond the boundaries. So then your question I know that's come up is, what if someone disrespects me? Or what if someone says something that I don't like and I know that that's, they cross my boundary? The first thing is this. What boundary did they cross? Did they truly cross a boundary? Because if your boundary was when people or your belief, belief and boundary can be the same thing. When people interrupt me, they don't value me. Maybe that's your belief. When people interrupt me, they don't value me. Don't have, they don't value what I have to say. If someone interrupts you and then you feel like there's disrespect, like they are going against something that I believe in, it's time for me to stand up for my belief. If you do that in that moment, You are telling them that you must take on my belief as well. This is what you're telling them. You must take on my belief as well. So did they actually cross a boundary or are you trying to force them to take on your belief? This is what you have to understand. You're trying to force them to believe something that you believe. Because the only way you can interact is for them to take on the same belief. Because if they don't, then you guys will butt heads all the time. Because their belief is, I want to say what I have to say and I want to get through it. Even if that means I cut you off, I'm, I just got to get through it because that's me expressing myself. Maybe that's their belief. But then your belief is, if somebody crosses something when I'm speaking to them, if they interrupt me, then they don't value what I have to say. But this was set up. To get the person to do something that you want them to do. That's what I'm telling you. That boundary is actually not needed. It's not. And it brings me into. We want people to know. That we. Mean something. That what we say and what we do have value. And we're even willing to go to the extent of telling people that this is what I believe in and I'm willing to stand up for it. Why do you think there's a, something called stand up for what you believe in? We will stand by whatever it is we feel is close to us, even if we didn't consciously acquire it, we will stand by it. So many people are out there trying to set boundaries and bring it into the self-development community. Many people are believing that this is the way to be able to bring people into my life and be happy. This is only grazing the surface of what it means to be happy. What you're really doing is that you are controlling those around you. That's actually what's happening. You want power that you feel like other people are taking from you in the moment. And every single time you set the boundary, you get the power back. And you feel like, I'm powerful when I do this. So when people set, when they start doing this, they start to feel like untouchable. But what they notice is that they're always setting boundaries. It's not like they do that and then they learn it, internalize it, and be able to know what it really means. They're actually gaining the strength to continuously do this. That's what they're doing. And somebody can get so good at this, so good at setting boundaries, 
that is just like when somebody says something, it'll be easy for them to just go Whoop, just like very quickly. Because I used to do this because I thought this was the way to really be powerful around someone else when I feel like they're doing something I don't like. Whether it be somebody close to me, somebody I just meet, this is the way to do it. This is what I felt on the inside. But as I started to really see and see and see, I started to go, actually, there is no boundaries. There's not. Every time I set a boundaries, because I wanted the power back. I felt I lost power in the moment and I set a boundary to get it back. So I'm actually operating from fear. That I'm, I'm, the, the boundary is set up from the fear of losing power. Then I went, so in the moment, what's really needed is for me to just be aware of the person. Express what I need to, but be aware of the person. I know that there's people who I want to be around and people who I don't want to be around. But that comes from my awareness. That doesn't come from the fact of judgment. That comes from the fact of I'm aware that this person wants to, feels like they have to interrupt so they can get their point across. And it's fine. They can do that. And I, all I need to do is express what I need to express in the moment, but be aware of how they respond to it. That's it. So how would that be different from if somebody said, because I'm using the whole video, the interruption. If somebody was to interrupt me, it's just like, you're interrupting me while I'm speaking. I know that you really want to say something, but um, I really want to say something. I want to finish what I have to say. That's not setting a boundary. That's not. That's me just expressing myself. And the person may actually feel that it's a boundary. They may feel like, fuck, okay, when he talks, I can't do this. But that's them just gaining more awareness for themselves. That's the great thing about this. But many of the times, I can say that to someone, and then they'll continuously just want to interrupt, just continuously because it's their pattern. And the choice just becomes, do I want to be around this person or do I not want to be around this person? It's not, if you interrupt me more while I'm speaking, then I don't want to speak to you. I don't have to say that. The, if you do this, I won't do this, that part is not needed. It's just awareness of, this person does this, do I want to be around this or not? That's it. Express what you need to, but be aware of the person that's in front of you as you express that. Do they apologize? Do they thank you for the fact that you stopped them because they didn't realize what was happening? Do they become angry? Do they feel like you are rude? Do they feel like they've become really apologetic and almost like, oh, I'm sorry. Whatever it is that they give you, you want to, from that, start to go with, do I want to continue to be around this person? You don't have to make it, of course, from every situation. Like, what the person does it once, then you go, okay, do I want to be around them? No. But when we get around people and you start to become aware, because remember, awareness is what I talk about. When you start to become aware of people, you start to go, do I want to be in this or do I not want to be in this? Do I like this or do I not like this? That's something that you have the liberty to express. But let them be a person that's interrupting. Let them be that person. That's what they are. You express what you need to, but it's their choice whether or not they're going to say sorry and stop doing it because they just feel like they don't want to do it anymore. That's fine. That means that you've truly met a person <coughs> who truly respects you. You didn't have to make them respect you, they truly respect you. To really respect someone is to love them. To really respect yourself is to love yourself. That's what respect really means. 
you don't walk away from them because it's just like, oh, they're disrespecting me. You walk away from them because you're like, love won't be able to exist here. It won't. Because this person is always not allowing the transmission. So that's okay. I'm not willing to be around that person. And with this, you may notice that you will walk away from family, that you won't want to be around them. You don't have to try to save relationships. You don't have to try to do that because there's still a barrier between you and the person. And if there is one barrier, there will be many more set up. It's not like there's just this one thing they're going to do. Remember, when two people come close together, I don't care if that's man or woman, two friends, it doesn't matter. When two people come together, there's, there's never just this always. There's never that. It's never, it's always this, it's always that. It is, it's going to be that. But it's the two parts willing to express themselves and the other really willing to express respect the other so love can be there. That's what it really means. So if somebody tells you, respect yourself, understand that you don't need to try to find your own power. You don't need to. The power comes through the love for yourself. Make others respect you. You don't need to make others respect you because when you do that, you set up a barrier between you and people. If you're really about becoming closer to others, then this is something you're going to have to understand. If you're about making sure that you maintain power, if you're making sure that you do that, then you continue on with doing that. I'm not going to stop you. This is just an alternative. This is another way of going about life. It's understanding that I can love someone else. I can choose to be around someone else without having to set the boundary. All I need to do is in the moment where they say something, I feel something. From a place of clarity, I can say to them the thing that I feel. But it doesn't need to be followed with, if you do this, continue to do this. It, even if they continue to do that, you start to go, ah, this person always does this. And you express that to them. Well, if they continue to do that, you, it's not your job to try to change them and try to save their relationship. That's not your job to do that. You can only say to them what you feel and let them process that and it spread their awareness of, okay, do I want to continue to do this? Because in that moment, they have to go in themselves. Do I want to say this or do I feel like I am not going to be controlled by anybody so I'm going to keep doing it? That wouldn't work out anyway in the long run. People have all kinds of relationships that they're trying to make work by doing all kinds of things. And the transmission that they, that they truly want can never ever truly come through because there's always a boundary set up by the, by the next transmission. It's like boundary, there's a transmission, oh fuck, okay, she, she won't keep doing this, oh, all right. Boundary, next thing, okay, you're with this friend. And as you're, you're with each other and then you notice that they do something that you don't like and you, it goes against one of your beliefs, boundary, and it'll keep happening. But it's just express myself. When you express yourself, it's free like this. That's what it is. It's totally free. And it's aimed at the person, of course, so it goes, the energy goes here, but it's totally free. It has no bounds. Expression has no bounds. So you take it here and the person receives it. When they receive it, it's up to them to do whatever they're going to do. Let them do that. And if they are not willing to allow their awareness to be spread by you, if they're not willing to go, ah, for, I really respect you. I mean, like, I really want this to happen. So I am willing to not speak. If they don't go through that on the inside, good luck trying to save what you guys have because you will continuously set up things. Expression is more important than boundaries. Boundaries are set up by belief. Expression is of the heart. When you truly are expressing something, like genuinely, truly expressing it from your heart, the other person can truly receive it. But if there's, I'm speaking, why do you keep cutting me off or any of that? Of course the person is going to feel like they need to go on the defense. Of course they are. 
there's different ways of doing this. And this is one of the ways I love about when I'm helping someone is that I give them the chance to see that there's different ways of doing this. And it's different for each person based on the situation. This is just something very general that you can do, but it's very specific to from person to person in your situation. Because family and everything, it could be very different for you. And based on where you are and how much you want to change as well. I'm coming to Berlin, April 7th, and I have a seminar. And if you feel like you want to learn more about yourself, who you are, because you just don't know, what, is, what would it feel like for you to live naturally in the way you want to be? To get over certain things you've been struggling with from your past, this is definitely for you. In the description box below, there'll be Berlin seminar tickets available and you click that link and it'll take you there. There's still, still some spots left. There are only 20 guys that are allowed to this. So if you feel like you really want to learn more about yourself, this is your chance to come and ask me a question. This seminar is only Q&A. I don't do talks. I do Q&A based on what you need. In the meantime, I want to tell you that I've been getting emails, a lot of them, and they're continuously happening. I'm having calls every day with guys on the telephone on coaching that I'm going to do. I haven't put out my dates on my upcoming coaching this year, but if you feel like, you know what, Tony, I want to do Skype coaching or I want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching or know about the workshops that you have coming up, email me at Tony Solo. I'll put it right here below. Tony Solo at the essence of man. Dot com. I answer my emails very quickly, so it won't be like I'll leave you hanging. I have a free meet the bedroom series. Everything from what do you do in the approach to what do you do going to the bedroom. Totally free for you. It's also in the description box. You can click the link below the Berlin seminar tickets. Subscribe because this is where you're going to be able to follow me and share this with anybody who you feel needs to know this. And I'll leave you with this. It's more important to be that which you are than try to become that which you want. So never try, just be. I'll talk to you tomorrow.